Hey everyone, thanks for joining me in this video. I will be going over some common vagrant commands that you will use for your workflows. So if I just type vagrant here, we'll see a list of uh, a lot of different commands, but there's actually only a few of them that you will be using all the time. The first one we went over in the first video, which is init, and that's basically building the vagrant file. The next one was vagrant up, which actually provisions the vagrant environment. But we haven't really gone over how you can reload your virtual machine, check the status, and actually remove the virtual machine. So I will be going over that right now. So if I go ahead and clear the screen here, uh, I can run the command vagrant status. And it should tell me that the virtual machine is online since I can see it running here in VirtualBox. So yes, I can see the status is up, um, but this just shows me the status of the virtual machine within this current working directory. If I wanted to see the status of all my Vagrant managed machines, I would type Vagrant Global Status, and this will return a full list of uh, all the machines I have. Uh, let's see if we can make that a little cleaner. But as you can see, I have a lot of different machines in different directories here, all managed by Vagrant, and it gives the status and uh, the provider, which is VirtualBox. So that's a good way to visualize everything. If you're seeing a lot of machines here that don't exist anymore, what you might need to do is run this command here and this will prune any of the old uh, hanging configurations that don't exist anymore. So go ahead and run that command if you have uh, sort of a messy environment that you need and you need this list cleaned up. Uh, the next thing is if we clear the screen if we type vagrant ssh config this will give us the configuration of ssh so here's our SSH configuration, and as you can see, it spat out everything that we would need to connect to this host via a terminal session. So I'm going to pull up a terminal here. There we go. And I am going to do a new session, SSH. 127.0.0.1 and I can specify a username vagrant is the username and then change the port to 2222 or whatever shows up for you on your end this port can be unique if you have multiple virtual machines then you'll probably have different ports for each of them just so you can manage them all. Uh, so I can see that my SSH worked and I got in there just fine. If it prompts you for a password, uh, the password is Vagrant. So username Vagrant, password Vagrant, and that should get you in. So that's how you can manage it with SSH. The next thing is so the next thing is, if we wanted to reload our virtual machine, we would just type vagrant reload. And this will actually restart the virtual machine. So you can see it's doing a graceful shutdown. And just clearing everything off. And we can see that it's, it's actually cycled power right there. And now it's and now it's booting it up. All right, so it's back up, and we can see that it's up. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. So the next thing you may want to do is you, you may want to just suspend it. Excuse me. So just type vagrant suspend, and you should see it saving the state and suspending it. So I can see uh, it looks like it's paused there. So if you want to unpause it, just do uh, another 
can just do a vagrant up. And that will uh, unpause it and bring it back up. You can see uh, it's resuming the suspended VM and restoring the state. And we're back to running. So that's good. Um, so if you don't want to suspend it, but you actually want to shut it down, you just use Vagrant Halt, and this will shut down the instance. And you can see it's doing a graceful shutdown. And now it's powered off. And if you wanted to actually remove the virtual machine so it's no longer managed by Vagrant, just type in Vagrant Destroy. And uh, we should see it being removed here. It looks like it wants to prompt us. So we'll say yes to destroy the machine. And we can see it disappeared there. So it destroyed the virtual machine and the associated drives. So make sure that you don't actually need anything on there anymore before you destroy it. But that's all I wanted to show everyone in this video. Uh, please join me next time. And we are going to actually configure a Vagrant file to deploy multiple different servers at once. So please join me for that. It's actually very helpful to be able to deploy multiple servers at once with a single Vagrant file. If you enjoyed this video, please like. And if you want to see more uh, helpful videos in regards to Vagrant or anything DevOps related, please subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.